The Last Coffee House, the creator of Minecraft, Notch, has had references to him within the game, and I used to remember these. I played the hell out of this game. I remembered these. It had little blurbs that said, created by Notch, or made by Notch, and the work of Notch. He has been scrubbed. Microsoft, of course, bought the rights to Minecraft a few years ago. I think it was 2014. For a cool 2.5 billion, I believe. And now, recently, I think this was just like last week, it was determined that those little notes, those little pop-ups should be scrubbed from the game. And the reason for that hasn't been explicitly stated by Microsoft. But many in the Twitter and blogospheres believe that it has something to do with his statements related to complex and controversial political topics. Of course, he has he has all the money that he's going to need, so he doesn't much have to care about whether he's going to offend somebody or not. And he said some choice things on social media. There's an article written about it. Minecraft update removes in-game references to its controversial creator. So the reason I chose this article was not necessarily because he was removed. I don't I don't much care whether it has those little extra references. It still has his name at the end. The article itself exemplifies the big issues related to how we use Lacanian master signifiers nowadays. That's a very intense way of saying that. I just mean that when we use words that are a gigantic reference to a whole bunch of things, but they come prepackaged, and that's, especially nowadays, the modus operandi of the moral outrage machine. So the article itself says that, so Notch was removed from references in-game, and the references, like I said, were like made by Notch, and the work of Notch, they just pop up on the title screen. And the article states that he has made made racist, homophobic, transphobic, and misogynistic comments on Twitter. Now, I didn't just pull those at different places in the article where they supported these claims or anything like that. This was a, just a list, and this is how it usually comes, as a list. You can't just be one of those things anymore. Later, quote, it says, it says, quote, <laughs> Instead of being quiet and enjoying his billions of dollars, likes to put other people, quote, instead of being quiet and enjoying his billions of dollars, he likes to put other people down and express ideas of white male supremacy, end quote. And his name is still in the credits of the game, but those references have been taken out. So here's my problem, is that these often come like this, that they're prepackaged moral combination, rather than actually meaning something, rather than each one of those terms being clearly defined and then clearly have their attendant referent that demonstrates that it meets the definition. They are usually just a laundry list of saying, this is all my moral condemnation, it's every form that it can take, and this person is all of these things because if I hedge my bets that way, then by a social negotiation, those things are going to stick better. The truth of the packaged assertions is just assumed. It's never even in question. He's made racist, homophobic, transphobic, and misogynistic comments on Twitter. This particular article references a tweet by somebody else who packaged a few of the tweets that he had made previously. And I looked up, I tried to find whatever discriminatory tweets that he has made. But what's curious about this, like I said, is that they're just packaged together. It's like they come in a progressive moral condemnation toolkit where they just have all these things that you get to, you have to use them all. If you're going to use one, <laughs> you throw them all out there and you don't have to define any of them. You don't actually have to argue for the application of any of them. They're just there. You use them and, and that's that. If they do any one of the things, if they say anything, thing that's a hot button issue that even flirts with rightist positions, then you can just affix all of these labels to that particular person. So some of the tweets that I found, uh, he said something about if you're against the concept of heterosexual pride day, you're a complete effing C word and deserve to be shot. So I don't... <laughs> approve of that message. Any kind of violence, yeah, I think he later tweets, he does a little joke thing with uh, deserve to be shot, but any advocation of violence that isn't very funny doesn't have a place. It's, it's a cheap way to do it, but whatever the case, it's not, I'm not condemning his, his particular speech here when it comes to the tweets, but this one is, it's so vaguely homophobia adjacent. It's really just, <laughs> it's an affront to the straight laced talking points that have to be a certain way. You know, it's that new speak category. They have to be a certain way. If you talk any other way about it, then you're automatically affixed with these labels. So logic would say that if there's a, a pride day that celebrates homosexuality, why can't there be a heterosexual celebration as well? That's what he's pointing out. And you don't know by this particular content whether he is against the act, the physical act of homosexual lovemaking. You know, 
don't know whether he is against the fact of there being a pride day. You don't know his stances on a gay marriage or whether he would approve of homosexuals adopting or anything like that. But that apparently is the thing that is sufficient to call uh, condemn somebody as homophobic. He tweeted also, it's okay to be white. And again, it's this linking of concepts. There's that huge matrix that said if you watch a Ben Shapiro video, then suddenly you're going to be looking at Satan Hitler later. So that's what I mean here is that it's just a, they connect all these things. So he tweeted, it's okay to be white. It was a joke made by some, as far as I know, some alt-right people that said that, oh, look, there's going to be all this outrage if we say the most innocuous statement imaginable. And once there's all this outrage, people will see that it's just an outrage mob and it's not really about protecting people or thinking things through or <laughs> being genuine about what you're arguing. It's really just about the outrage. And that's, of course, what happened. But here he, he tweets, it's okay to be white. What do you What do you think he means by having tweeted that? Do you get to attach a whole bunch of other concepts to it and then condemn those things? Uh, I'm guessing that's part of the reason they said that he was a racist. Next, uh, he talks about privilege is a made up metric used to silence and repress. We are all different and that is okay. We listen to individuals and help each other based on individual strengths and needs. We do not generalize based on skin color. Bigot. <laughs> And this, I don't have any problems with that sentiment, but that's another one that they likely use to say that uh, he's somehow supporting white male supremacy and, and the patriarchy and... <laughs> and being a racist. But this is, again, what I mean that they prepackage, they toss in all these other ideas that are automatically attached to this particular statement and say that, no, you're this other thing rather than the thing that you are saying. Now you become something else entirely. Because he could literally mean that he thinks that people are individuals and shouldn't be treated on the basis of their skin color. <laughs> And somebody will take that and attach it to a whole bunch of other ideas about racism and privilege and all that other sort of stuff. He tweeted, pro tip, believing in race-based privilege needing to be checked fits the literal definition of racism. Again, uh, makes perfect sense. I think it's an entirely valid argument. And again, it will be attached to a whole bunch of other things. So some of the other ones that they referenced is something about... International Women's Day or something like that, or Celebrate Women's Day or something. And he said something about them being cooks. Uh, you're wonderful and a cook or something like that. It wasn't even a, a good joke. But so again, referencing a stereotype related to women. So therefore, he's a misogynist. Uh, does that mean that he believes, having made a, a vague kind of joke, <laughs> does that mean that he believes that A, women should be subjugated on the basis of their gender, B, that women are naturally inferior to men, C, any taking a stereotypical position on on women in general based on some other kind of stereotype or or that there should be policy in place to put women one place instead of another like funnel them into a particular kind of job does it have anything to do with that who knows they just use the label of misogynistic because this one thing is vaguely stereotype adjacent Another one was about pronouns, that he, that it wasn't the people who were insisting to use, you know, dead names and the pronouns, uh, previous pronouns, that were the ones using the wrong pronouns. It was the people now using the pronouns of the ones using the wrong pronouns. So again, what is the actual content? What does that actually mean? He's a biological essentialist, <laughs> so... So it's really just a matter of, uh, I disagree with the definition of words and now slapped with a particular label that can mean a whole bunch more than that. The particular transphobic label, especially because of the kinds of bullying and violence and that sort of thing that can be attendant to that label, that that's included in some way. When in fact, somebody could just have the idea of, no, I don't want my words to mean some other kind of thing. And that's it. I don't have any kind of animus or want any kind of harm to befall anybody who happens to be be trans or anything else. I mean, most importantly, like each one of these terms is massive and can have thousands of parts to them and different thresholds for each part and different definitions for every word that's used to define each one of those parts. And yet they're used as a prepackaged attack on somebody who expresses an idea outside of, I mean, just to the right of this particular dogma. And that's what's concerning about it, is that people just attach so many things just automatically, instantly, and think that that's okay and they don't have to define anything else all right so labbing it position being held is that these things are and should be treated as much more complex concepts than simply stating them as a laundry list for anything that's been said that's adjacent to a, a right position you should define these terms and actually give them content because they don't have any content anymore. They're vacuous and pointless and ridiculous. Liabilities, what kind of expertise do I have in this area? How many books have I read? And what kind of education have I received? And there's not much to be had specialization-wise in this area. I'm sure there are vague 
educational categories that touch upon this stuff that actually mean nothing because it's just about the definitions of words and whether we're being genuine about attacking people and morally condemning people. So few liabilities. The anchor is virtually non-existent. But again, this uh, complexity comes into it, but the complexity isn't really in each one of the concepts. The complexity is attacking somebody who is not defining their concepts. So that's not very complex. So it's 50 pounds out of 2,000. So I don't have to be worried too much about whether my proposition here that I'm living is going to be correct because it's really about attacking somebody's lack of defining their own terms and using them so broadly rather than about the actual concepts themselves and defining those. Finally, bias, as always, <laughs> there is some kind of a potential bias related to me not liking the whole ideas, the victimhood and everything else that is being trotted out right now uh, in our very affluent, complacent society with its gigantic identity black hole at the center. So I have a bias against that, social justice stuff. I could have a bias that's not supported by arguments and evidence, so that could be coloring my positions on this particular proposition. So I have to make sure to pay attention to that and fight it. All right, so that was the last coffee house. Thank you very much. All right, bye.